Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Uh, welcome back, everybody. We are going to dig into something today that is kind of a baseline for pretty much everything in your life when you think about it, because it applies to you personally, it applies to people around you, it applies to relationships, it comes down to one word, trust. Do you have trust in yourself, trust in others? What happens when trust is lost? We're going to talk about that today. And she's somebody that helps people with this and so much more as a life coach and a counselor and works in many different areas with individuals, couples, and more. And I love the name of her practice, Beautifully Broken. We are. Dawn Manderfeld joins us here on the program. How are you today? I'm good, Steve. How are you? As soon as we started talking about this, I, I hear Billy Joel's It's a Matter of Trust playing oh. in my head, playing in my head. Yeah, the, the trust thing. You know, when we said we were going to talk about this topic, you know, I thought about trusting others, but then I, I, I put it back on us. You have to have trust in yourself, too, in many regards, faith in yourself. Um, I never realized that until we just dove into this just now. Like it applies everywhere, doesn't it? It does. Yep. Yeah. You have to have trust that what you're going to do in, during that day is the right pl right places you're supposed to go, the right steps you're supposed to take. You have to trust the process of when you go to work, who you're going to be around. When you go shopping, who you're going to be around. I mean, trust is an endless thing that could be discussed. Hmm. Yeah. That is just, especially in this day and age. You know, I mean, we are, you go to the mall, you're trusting the cops to protect you. You know, you go to work, you're trusting your boss that he's going to have your best interests at hand if there should be a stressful situation that comes up. Sure. You go home, you have to believe that your family or your significant other, your children, that they're, they're entrusting in you to make sure they're okay, everything's done okay. But then it kind of falls on, do we trust ourselves in the decisions and the steps and what we have to do on a daily basis? Do we really trust ourselves with other people in our care? Do mm. we trust how we do our job? Do we trust how we're a friend? You know, I mean, you could just go on and on and on. You really can. <laughs> and I didn't truly realize it until the moment we started today. And I really mean that, you know, I just assume, you know, trust is for other people. And we've all been through those situations where, Trust has been uh, breached and it's uh, a game changer. How, let's go there. Let's say you have a relationship, whether it's a best friend, whether it's a spouse, trust is broken. They did something, maybe infidelity, maybe, and I've been in this one. I've been in that one too. Um, not me, the one <laughs> on the recipient yeah. end of that. Um <laughs> Also, uh, a friend, let's say you loan money or, or you give it to them uh, and then you don't ever see it again, uh, but you trusted that you would. When the trust is broken, how do you regain that trust? It's it a tough really, one. It's a tough one, isn't it, it? It is because it really depends on the situation. And trust can take a lot of time to regain yeah. It is not something that happens overnight. And when you are learning to trust somebody again, forgiveness comes in there. Mm. Um, are you willing to forgive what they did enough to work on trusting them again? Um, another issue that can be really strong in a lot of those scenarios is not allowing yourself to have feel sh um, shame or guilt. Did I do something to make them do that? So that did they not trust me? So is that why this happened? Or um, that's just a really good question. There's so many ways I could go with that. Mm. But a lot of it really is how important is that relationship to you? Do you know that person well enough and long enough to know that maybe um, maybe you can forgive them enough to trust 
But if you can't, then I don't know if trust can be built back. Not everybody is able to get trust back with, with people. And all the years I've counseled, I have had many, and even for myself, like what you brought up earlier, not on my end, but on the spouse's end. And what I ever trust him now as time has gone on, or even in a friendship, probably not. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. Um, I see that. I get that. And in the, the trust situation in a relationship, let's say it is infidelity. Um, There's two ways that people look at it where, well, the other person wasn't getting what they needed or wanted, or there's, they just did whatever they wanted to do. Um, I, I, I look at it that way. You know, if you're not getting what you need in a relationship, whatever it is, whether it's communication, physical, whatever, then say something, then talk about it. Yeah. Conversation is huge. You Yeah. have to talk about it. You, you, you can't have trust without communication. Yeah. Yeah. And in, and in many situations, uh, in that one scenario, and I've, I've talked with many, uh, that have been through it, it usually when somebody is breaks trust, um, uh, with infidelity, we'll just go with, you know, with that, um, Let's go with example. it. Yeah. Yeah. I find it can usually be traced back to issues that person has with other relationships of the past, maybe their parents, Classic daddy issues, need approval from somebody else, et cetera, et cetera. There's usually, usually a reason. And, you know, there's many times they weren't faithful or they weren't trustworthy before that relationship. That's just my view and my experiences, isolated situations. But I'd love your take. I mean, you deal with people, couples, individuals, you know, and I'm sure that's come up before, right? You know, it is probably one of the biggest things that I actually counsel on with couples that have been together for a long period of time. Um, I would probably say 20% of them come to me because of an infidelity issue um, and communicating with people they shouldn't be communicating with. Um, a lot of that, I think the first thing the person who is being... Um, let's just say cheated on, okay? What is usually the first thing that you feel when you've had that happen to you? Now, that can change it too. For some people, the first thing they feel is anger. For some, they feel um, embarrassed. For others, like in my case, I was like, well, what, am I not good enough? Like, am, am, was I not what this person wanted? I mean, everything was going so well, like, why Yeah. why would they why would they want to do that Right. so then you take the blame and the fault on yourself and it just spirals down from there because a lot of times like in my situation i asked why i didn't get an answer really but then like you said you look at their past how they grew up what they went through and it was just like oh my it's like it's like a circle just Oh, going yeah. around and around and around it's like That is all they saw <laughs> on both ends, mm -hmm. you know? It's true. Yeah. And you think, well, I can change that. But, you know, sometimes it takes a little more than you just thinking you can change somebody. I uh, I yeah, mean... I don't I don't look at it, you know, you I don't feel I can change anybody. Um when I was in that situation the first time and I trusted that uh it it wouldn't happen again. Uh, shame on me. <laughs> How does that go? Uh, George Bush, shame on fool me once, fool me twice, whatever. Um, it, it, it was more of a, of course there's anger, but I think we've discussed before anger is really something else. It's Yep, never just exactly. anger, Yep. but it's more of a, how could you do that? Like, who are you? Where did that come from? Um, I think that that comes up a lot more. And again, it takes two relationships takes two. It's not like It does. one person, you know, was the queen or, or the prince or the princess. And then the other, no, it, it does take two, but many times the, the scale tips like that, you know, when somebody breaches trust in a major way, like we're talking about here. Well, I can bring that up in, um, I have recently gotten remarried, um, You, after you, you trusted. 
I, yeah, but that's what I'm bringing into it is that I have family members and friends going, why are you guys dating so long? And um, this is exactly what we're talking about. He had been hurt twice before pretty severely. And so have I, like in our relationships. And I was to the point where I don't want to be in a serious relationship if I don't know I can trust this man Mm -hmm. for sure in every single aspect of my life. I want to know I can trust him with my kids. I want to know that I'm going to be enough for him. I want to know that he's not going to wander off somewhere else. You know, when I realized when we were starting to date, we were both going through a lot of healing from our past. And we allowed each other to do that. And that was a huge part of why we are such a good team right now is we literally had to work through a lot of emotions from distrust from his past and from mine. And I wasn't so sure I really wanted to do it, you know, a third time. Like, do I, do I really, I'm kind of okay on my own. I like it. But yet I've always loved the idea of being with someone, you know, having that kind of life. Sure. But I'll tell you what, it took five years of us dating and he doesn't, he, he didn't live here. So he would travel to see me. Um, but it was very interesting when all of a sudden it kind of clicked for me in certain areas. Like I can really trust him in this area. Mm. He really isn't looking at anybody else. He, he, I really am enough for him. And then he would say the same thing where, well, you really aren't here for, you know, what I have to offer financially or what I have to offer in this. So, I mean, we slowly had to go through together while we're learning and, and trusting each other and learning who each other is. We were really going through a lot of baggage Mm. and we made it, Wonderful. you know, Yeah. we, we made it. But I'll tell you what, trust takes time to get back. And you may be able to build some of that back, Steve, with somebody from the past or somebody that you're with. But if it's, if there are signs there that you're really unsure of, you really need to make sure that you are willing to talk about it, discuss it, and forgive them and be able to truly move on completely clean slate. Because if you cannot... That is always going to be held over your relationship, always. Sure. Uh, yes. There's always going to be that little voice in your, your head that's Yeah. going to be talking to you. And, and, and by the way, we think the same. What you just described, I would do the same exact thing. It's almost as if you had to check the boxes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't know what the boxes are until the situation comes up. And You you say, don't, because oh. you have emotions you thought you already dealt with, and Right. all of a sudden, Right. they're, they're there again, You're and you're like, oh my, you know, it kind of freaks you out a little. But but Like, oh, when I the, thought I dealt with that a long time ago, you right, know? it comes up, but then you when you feel that comfort, you know, be, okay, situation comes up and right away you call it triggered, you're like, hmm. But then you're like, hmm, well, I can trust them. I feel good about that. Go with your gut, check the box off, on to the next one. And and you're hundred percent right. And I'll be very transparent in a long, very long term relationship in the beginning. She revealed that she had cheated on her first husband with her friend, who was a woman. Um, I was like, yeah, I was younger, so what did I say? Cool. <laughs> at that time, uh, you know, I was younger, she was younger. Uh, she was younger than me. And then time went on, and then, you know, I, I caught stuff going on, and we discussed, confronted. But I have to tell you, Just what you said, there was always the 5% voice in my head. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Be careful there. Keep an eye. And I don't want to live like that, but I did. It was okay. Things were, you know. Um, and then I thought that, you know, we got past that situation. Um, but But that wasn't the case. And bottom line is, go with your intuition. Go with your gut. If Even if it's the... what I thought, heaven sent, heaven sent, brought this to me. Uh, no. 
<laughs> because people have issues that they haven't dealt with. And I'm going to share this phrase with you, and I pilot by it nowadays. Um, and not that that one scenario, but just in general, my journey. And that is love everyone, trust few, always do the right thing for all, not just yourself. You could say, well, I did the right thing, but that just benefited you. Um, but the trust few for me is just a, that's a big one right there. And I don't know if that's right, but that's, that's how I, I roll with it. Uh, because I trust everyone. <laughs> I like to see the yeah. good. And that uh, gets me into trouble sometimes. But see, that's how I am. I trust everybody. And I always see the good in people before I'll see anything else. Mm. And yes, it has gotten me into trouble. Yeah. But I think one of the biggest things is, is, one thing in a relationship, you know, if you're working through the trust and you know, if that person really, truly, I mean, hopefully they will, are willing to apologize for it. Some people don't, some people don't apologize for it. They just assume, well, we're in this relationship, so we're just going to keep going and I'm going to really try hard not to do it again. But when you start getting that person's undivided attention when you're together and they start putting you as a priority for them as they do for themselves. That's when you know that they truly were sorry for what they did and they really don't want to lose you. And they really do want to work it out. Mm. And that's when I always say, get help. If you need that, don't be so prideful that you're not willing to seek help in that because there are a lot of successful relationships that have been through infidelity that are now, they are power couples. I mean, they are people that other people want to be like because it can really, really grow your love for each other in such a new level that it can just put you on, on an amazing high for a long time. Mm. I, I envy those couples. I don't, I wouldn't want to be in that situation where there was a breach of trust, but, and I almost find it almost like hard to believe that, you know, uh, a couple can move on, you know, after that. And it's so funny. I just got a memory in that relationship I referred to. We would tell everyone, you got to go on date night. That's the secret date night, like twice, twice a month, three times a month. So there wasn't real anything missing there. Um, and right to the end that was going on until, you know, I was told I want to get divorced. What? And that's where I trace it all back. Um, moving forward, I gave money to a friend, fairly large amount. You know, here, can you hold this? Whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, and they spent it. Very good friend. Okay. Uh, blew me away. Friend was remorseful. They obviously weren't in a good financial situation. And I've known them for since we were kids. They took out a loan against their 401k and paid me back within two weeks. And our relationship is better than it's ever been. So, you know, there's the side of you yeah, can move forward <laughs> if if the other person who breached the trust trust does the right thing and, and really is remorseful. Yep. And you were willing to talk to them. Sure. And they, and they actually heard you. I have in the past borrowed large sums of money out also. And to this day, I have not received anything mm -hmm. back. And some of those relationships, they literally will try to avoid me mm. to this day. And I mean, we're talking, we were very good friends. Like we were together every week, we did stuff. And then all of a sudden when I borrowed them the money and they said, okay, you know, can we have this long to pay it back? And I'm like, you know what? Yeah. And literally, I remember saying, yeah, I have no reason not to trust you. You know, I, I believe that, you know, you, you will be able to do that because they were coming into a large sum of money coming up and they needed help until that happened. And when they got that money, they kind of slowly quit coming around. They slowly quit calling. They slowly quit hanging out. And now they just kind of vanished. I mean, I know they're still here in the area where I live, but mm -hmm. um, 
I can't imagine caring. I mean, do they feel guilty? Do they feel ashamed? Do they, I wonder, right? That's a really and great what, question. what you do, because it's like, I've, I've never confronted one time I confronted them. I said, Hey, did everything go through? You know, did you get, you know, your finances that you were planning on? I said, I really hope everything went well. And their last comment literally on the phone was, yeah, pretty much. We're still working on it, but, um, we know you, we, we owe you money. And I'm like, well, hey, we're friends here. You know, I'm not holding it above your head. Oh, no, no, I know you're not. That was like one of our last conversations, like ever. And now they are like living very well, <laughs> you know, and you, you just you just wonder. And there again, it's like, yeah, you bring up such a great, man. great point on. <laughs> do these people even care or do they have they just, you know, done what they've done? Whether it doesn't matter what it is, but I'm talking major stuff in breaching trust. Do they just move on and just it's not in their minds? I, I can never do that. I'd be walking around every day like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I got to pay that back or, you know, <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? Or some people just wired. You know, they don't give a CRAP and they just go. I, I, I really have been baffled by that. Mm. I really don't know because I knew these people for 20 plus years. And so I just really felt like it would never be an issue between us. Right. It's sad to me that they're choosing the avoidance when all they would have to do is just talk to me. Right. I, I'm not mad at them. I, I'm I'm surprised. But I can honestly say to you that I'm not mad at them. I would just like to know what happened. You know, because then that might even help me with what I do. If I understand if people are being willing to be truthful with me and trust our relationship enough to just talk to me. But I do wonder what they think. I really do. It's like, are they upset about it? Have they totally forgotten about it? Like, do they feel ashamed that they, I mean, they right. know me. Right. I would never yell at them. I would never. Yeah. Like, how do you just you like, know? you know, sweep it under the rug? I don't know. I might, I might even just reach out. Hey, hope everything's going well for you. Listen, I'm having some financial challenges and truly need uh, the money I gave you back. And I'm, I, I'm always truthful. So what's a financial challenge? And hey, I want to go on vacation. I'm challenged. I can't afford it. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That could be a challenge. Could be a challenge. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. You know. Hmm. You know, and see what you get back. And if you don't get anything, okay. If you get, you might even get back. Yeah, we're, we're still having trouble here. I'm really sorry, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, whatever. That's interesting you said that because I, I did try calling them one day. Um, they have a child that's the same age as one of mine and they were coming to town. So they wanted to like see him. They said, mom, is anything changed? No, blah, blah, blah. And um, I got a text back saying, I'm sorry, this is my number. This is my name. And I really don't know who you are. And so they changed, they changed their, number. their number. So I I don't have a way of getting a hold of them oh. and the place that we used to worship together, they're no longer there. So I, I can't, Okay. I have, I have seen them out and about. Literally I saw them in, in, in um, the mall uh, about two years ago, maybe. And as soon as they saw me, they were gone. And I'm like, and here I was in, yeah. the world, hey guys, you know what? You I'm, I'm getting, and they were gone. Uh, I, 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 I've, I've talked to people who are intuitive and they tell me that I'm intuitive. I'm like, all right, I'm getting right now. You're not the only one. They've done this to many others. Um, and, and short of that, maybe hit them up on Facebook, you know, I am them. See if you probably, it's going to probably go nowhere, but at least, you know, in your heart that I made the attempt. <laughs> wow. Um, we're out of time. I didn't think that we'd be able to talk about trust for almost 30 minutes. <laughs> if we could keep going and you're right. Yeah. This is, you know, I was going to say, well, I actually have a comment back to that, but I guess we'll save that for another time. Wow. Because, you know, what's your website? Somebody wants to find you. Uh, they're having some challenge challenges, whether individually or as a couple, how do they connect with you? Um, my website is livingbb.org. My email is Don Renee at livingbb.org and my phone number is 952-200-1103. Thank you so much for today. Truly appreciate it. And I trust next time we get together, it will be just as good. It will. Awesome. You have Thanks. a blessed week now. You too. We'll be right back. 
Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.